The movie opens in Australia, depicting the dystopian year 2053. According to the narrator, after the last war, the crime rate has risen by over 800%, which has caused a crushing influx on the prison system. In order to mitigate the burden on prisons, the government has introduced the BOX Rehabilitation Program, a system that provides the prisoners with two choices, serve their sentence in solitary confinement or volunteer themselves for instant extermination. Once in the box, food and water will be supplied only with the permission of law-abiding citizens. Anyone who is caught trying to escape or aiding in any attempts will be harshly killed. We then see a French woman who is imprisoned inside one of such prison boxes. She seems to be struggling hard to live without food or water. At one point, she becomes so overwhelmed by the suffering that she reaches her lowest breakdown. As a result, she retrieves a small razor blade from a corner and fatally slashes her own neck. In the next scene, we are shown a rocky island beside numerous prison boxes. There, a girl and a young boy are seen playing with a rubber ball. Shortly after, the ball hits one of the boxes, causing prisoner 371113. It's like someone tried to type elite, but hiccuped to regain her consciousness inside it. As she wakes up, she finds her hands and legs tied with ropes. She frantically bangs on the box walls, shouting to be let out. Just then, a small screen displays a woman who informs her that the jury has proven her guilt, sentencing her to seven years of rehabilitation without parole. She further asserts that her food and water will be supplied only on the discretion of citizens she betrayed. Hearing this, the prisoner screams and cries, insisting that she is innocent. The following day, prisoner Leet wakes up and waves her food container to request some water. However, there is no one around to respond. Following this, she starts checking the entire box in hopes of finding a way to escape, but every touch results in an electric shock. As time passes by, survival becomes even harder. Meanwhile, in the other prison box, we see prisoner 13558 searching for an escape way. While inspecting, she inadvertently triggers an alarm, causing a red light to flicker. As a consequence, a sharp metal rod descends from the ceiling, which brutally impales her to death. The next morning, prisoner Leet is woken by a young woman who provides her with small food pellets and some water. The prisoner tries to explain that she is innocent, but the woman tells her that the citizens will decide her fate. She further adds that she is not the first nor the last prisoner they will have here. Following this, prisoner Leet spends some more days with the meager food and water, but one day, she becomes overwhelmed by hopelessness and depression. As a result, she takes a rope from the floor, intending to commit the unthinkable. She starts choking herself until she runs out of breath, but in the nick of time, she releases herself as she is unable to go any further. She then cries out loud, wondering what she did wrong to end up with such a fate. Over over time, prisoner Leet accepts her sentence and employs various distractions in order to cope with her situation. She starts to spend her days gazing out through a small hole and sleeping. One day, she reaches her hand outside and obtains the rubber ball. This acts as another means to help her pass the time. After a few weeks, a drone moves the prisoner's box to a different location, which appears to be a forest. Now she can bird watch. In the next scene, we are introduced to another prisoner with the code number 180102. He has a five-year sentence and has already served half of it inside the box. After spending two and a half years there, he has come to accept that being confined there is justifiable due to the consequences of his past actions. One morning, prisoner Leet is approached by a girl dressed in blue. She asks her what she's doing, to which the prisoner replies that she's serving her seven-year sentence. The girl starts a conversation, asking if she has heard of William Shakespeare. When the prisoner answers in the negative, the girl offers her a book to read. However, the latter refuses to accept it, claiming that she is not permitted to do so during her rehabilitation period. In the midst of their conversation, the girl asks prisoner Leet to come closer, after which she holds her hands and recites some lines from Shakespeare's book, making her feel good. Good? What lines could she have possibly read? Following this, the girl hands her a small bag with food pellets and bids farewell, promising to visit her again. In the aftermath, prisoner Leet feels stimulated by the human encounter after such a long time. As a result, she lies down on the floor and touches herself, disregarding the fact that the CCTV camera is recorded recording everything. Later on, while eating, prisoner Leet discovers a miniature book nestled within the food packet. She turns her back to the surveilling camera and opens it, only to learn that it is a copy of William Shakespeare's book. Afterwards, prisoner Leet uses the saved water to clean herself, preventing infections from her body wounds. She then pours the used water outside through the opening. The CCTV camera catches her wasting the drinking water, and as a result, she is transported back to the seaside. Sometime later, the same civilian girl from earlier comes to her and inquires what she did to end up here. But instead of a direct answer, the prisoner asks how the citizens decide whom to feed among all of the imprisoned
imprisoned people. The girl confesses that she simply strolls among the boxes, talks to the inmates, and provides them with food. She asserts that she tries to reach as many people as possible, but the bad weather often prevents her from doing so. As they converse, prisoner Leet tells her that she reminds her of her younger sister, who is no longer alive. The confinement period continues, and the only solace for prisoner Leet is the miniature book which she regularly reads, hiding it from the camera. A few days later, the drone again transports her to another location. There, she is approached by a citizen, who taunts her by eating a juicy apple in front of her. Overwhelmed by extreme hunger, prisoner Leet pleads with the man to show her some mercy, but he rudely declines. It's my apple. <laughs> he further claims that all the prisoners should be executed without any mercy. Nevertheless, he is willing to offer his apple under a condition that she allows him to fulfill his gratification. Although this is against the law, the prisoner, who is driven by starvation, reluctantly agrees to his condition. She then removes her underpants and lets him have his way. In the midst of this illicit transaction, a patrolling drone catches him and instantly opens fire, killing the lawbreaker on the spot. One of the bullets hits the prisoner's leg, causing her great pain. Despite this, she reaches her arm outside and retrieves an apple from the deceased citizen. She immediately devours it, but to her dismay, the fruit is stuffed by worms, which prompts her to throw up. The same night, prisoner Leet wakes up to a blaring siren, and a voice tells her that she has violated the prison rule by agreeing to trade for food. This breach results in punishment. Seven days of insomnia, which the voice claims is the first and last warning. As a result of this, the subsequent days pass like hell for her, because every time she closes her eyes, a huge siren emanates along with the flickering lights. In a desperate bid to prevent herself from falling asleep, she bangs her head against the wall wall, inflicting self-harm. Moreover, the prolonged sleep deprivation plunges her into a state of hallucination, wherein she envisions a regal figure resembling her mirrored reflection. Eventually, the seven days pass, and her punishment comes to an end. Her tired brain finally gets the rest it craves, after which she ends up sleeping for days. One night, she hears the sound of some fireworks. She gets up to look outside and sees the blossoming sky with colorful fireworks. It turns out that the citizens are celebrating the new year. In the honor of this event, an amnesty is declared for the prisoners in isolation boxes, excluding those who are politically convicted. Thus, prisoner Leet continues to serve her sentence. One day, an elderly woman walks up to the prison box and talks to prisoner Leet. She shares her own harrowing experience of enduring 15 years in a similar confinement, confessing how it molded her into a resilient yet unpleasant person. She then tosses an old rusty razor blade towards the prisoner and walks away. In the next scene, prisoner Leet is once more approached by the same Shakespeare enthusiast from earlier. The prisoner initially believes her to be a hallucination, but the girl tells her that she's real. That's exactly what a hallucination would say. She then offers her some water and recites another paragraph from Shakespeare's book. Despite the encounter being a brief one, it somewhat provides relief from her ongoing pain. The scene then fast forwards to a few months later, and prisoner Leet's belly has gotten enlarged. Here, we learn that she is now pregnant with the baby of the man who offered her the apple earlier. During the nighttime, the Shakespeare enthusiast girl comes to prisoner Leet and expresses her desire to rescue her from captivity. However, the security system detects the interference, which causes the alarm to go off. Sensing the imminent danger, the girl hurriedly departs, after which the siren stops. The following morning, a citizen comes to prisoner Leet and asks if she wants mercy. When the latter affirms, the man shows her another prison box at a distance, which he seems to have burnt down as a form of mercy. Seeing this, she refuses to accept such mercy, opting to continue her miserable existence instead. As a few more months pass by, prisoner Leet experiences the onset of labor. After enduring the pain for a long while, she ultimately manages to give birth to her baby inside the box. As soon as she holds the baby in her arms, she feels so happy that she forgets the pain that she has been suffering for years. However, her happiness is short-lived because the security system immediately senses an extra soul in the chamber. As a result, it releases a gas, which acts as an anesthesia, rendering her unconscious. By the time she regains her consciousness, her child is already gone. This prompts her to cry frantically, screaming to have her baby back. However, as usual, her pleas go unanswered. At one point in time, Prisoner Leet's box is hit by the sea waves as well as rainstorm, due to which the water begins to fill in it. As the chamber gets soaked, she starts shivering out of cold. In addition, the security system malfunctions due to water, so it perceives her presence as a violation of the confinement. Consequently, the authorities from outside, who are completely unaware of the real ordeal, issue a warning that if the interference is not cleared with 
within a few seconds, the prisoner will get exterminated. With the countdown underway, the prisoner struggles against drowning in the rising water. Soon after, the countdown reaches zero, and the patrolling drone shows up to transport her for extermination. But on the way, the drone is struck by lightning, causing the box to plunge into the sea. In the final scene, we see some citizens playing on the coastline when they notice a prison box that has been washed ashore, along with the prisoner lead. Regardless, they choose to ignore it and walk away from the scene, abandoning the unconscious prisoner. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.